What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Al back again with another Black Ink Chicago review. Before we get into it, guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button, comment if I miss or you want to add anything. Also, be sure to like and share. Tonight episode was... It was the episode where we basically, we didn't get not one single thing accomplished <laughs> at all. Um, uh, at all, man. It was one of those episodes that I could have done without, just me personally. I could have done without it. But I guess they figured that uh, it would be a great episode if they was to involve a little... You know what I'm saying, sit down or whatever. But anyways, I'm going to just go ahead and run through the episode and you know what I'm saying, talk about it. The show starts off, we getting a flashback of the uh, brawl that happened between everybody, right? And um, I was just watching, I'm just like, we wasting three to five minutes of TV time. Well, we could be discussing junior, security, anything. We know what happened last week. We didn't need a flashback. That's what I was thinking. Anyway, so finally it catches up. We see junior swing at security and he ends up hitting Ryan. Now I'm gonna tell y'all something. I agree with the show producers, security, 1,000%. Junior had to go home. The way that he was acting towards the staff, not the fellow cast member, but the staff, it was just totally unacceptable. He was like making me upset because first off, I don't even think he bought that type. I just, he, he is not about that life. I don't think so. Second of all, they try to defuse the situation and he just, you know, he just steady going on and on. I wasn't here for it. I was, I was happy and I was satisfied with the way that the crew um, handled Junior. I mean, listen, he spit into the camera. He kept trying to throw punches and push security and I was just like, this is just childish, immature behavior. Let's just do away with it all together. And I'm saying to myself, this is the type of guy Ryan wants to manage his shop, huh? Somebody who, you know, spit in the camera face and try to fight security when they know security job is to defuse the situation. I was hoping one of them guys from security get their hands on him and just... Just hit him one time. I know I shouldn't be hoping that, but it was. But anyways, we get four in a confessional. And basically, he said he blames Lily and Junior for ruining the trip. Or well, I shouldn't say that. But for starting the brawl that happened um, at the, the party or uh, downtown or whatever it was. And I'm just sitting, I'm just shaking my head. I'm like, four. I'm just shaking my head. But we're going to get into Mr. Four a little bit later in the show, I promise you. But um, then, you know, we get a scene where I, I'm sorry. Ryan was icing his jaw, right? Not too much. Listen, I'm not even talking about Bella. So don't even ask about it. Moving on. We at Loyal Ink House. And um, Don, Don was very annoyed with what happened as far as the brawl. And once again, the reason that Don is annoyed is because he is team four. Whatever is best for four, that's what Don wants. And the whole time he was just saying, like, basically, guys, Let's just try to make the best of this, you know, the best of this, the, 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 the remainder of this trip. 
uh, a good trip. Let's make memories. Let's have fun. Let's let's not forget the reason we came down to support for all of those good things. And Lily was just pissing me off, man. She was just pissing me off. All she want to talk about is Junior. That's all she want to talk about. And I'm so tired of hearing about her and Junior beef, past relationship drama, beef with the new girlfriend. I could care less. I'm so sick and tired of hearing about Lily and Junior. I just, listen, I ain't got time for it. But anyways, we get a, we moving on, four ends up going to the studio recording the track. The beat was gas, man. I'm, I'm listening to the beat and I'm just like, okay, I, I like that, which is, I mean, to be expected, which is why London is a respected name in the music industry. And I felt like for the lyrics he was laying down, you know what I'm saying, the swag that he was giving off on the beat, the flow that he had, I felt like it, I felt like that had potential to be a, a good song. Like, I ain't gonna even lie. I liked what I was hearing. My head was bobbing. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, Four was basically saying, like, I need to be in the studio to clear my mind of all the, the craziness that's going on. And I'm like, you know what? I do agree with that. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you came here to make music, to perform, let's stick to that, right? And you know, ultimately he ended up saying that whatever he does in this studio is gonna be his legacy and not anything he done with his tattoo. And I mean, to a certain extent, he's right, but he's known as a tattoo artist that's trying to break into the music industry. And from what I can tell from the work I've seen, he's a, he's a, he's a pretty good tattoo artist. So let's not just dismiss you know what I'm saying? What art form that you have for this new one, it seems like, you know what I'm saying, it's on the up and up. Because I think Four is a great tattoo artist. Um, moving on, now we finally get to the night of Four's performance. Uh, Four finally comes down the, 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 the Greek loyal ink, you know, just chit chat with him back and forth. And I, you know what, I, listen, y'all can probably tell by my tone, I was very annoyed with this episode. <laughs> I, I, listen, I'm telling you, I was very annoyed. Uh, my tone will definitely pick up when we get to the dinner. I can guarantee you that. But, you know, he's speaking to everybody, you know, making conversation, and uh, he goes to talk to Don. And you know, he basically telling Don, like, man, you know what I'm saying, I wasn't happy with how things went down. Junior trying to fight you, and I'm like, no, that's my brother. What we do that at X Y Z? And in my opinion, Don was Don Don was the bigger person in this situation, cause the look on his face was like, man, like I love you, bro, but get out of my face with that with that 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 foo foo talk you talking, man. Just get out of my face with that fugazi that you telling me right now. But in the end, you know, Don was like, look, it don't even matter. We brothers, I love you. We gonna forever be cool. That's all that matters. Like once again, Don is team four. Don does not have, Don, listen, Don has no issue of putting, you know, BS to the side to, you know what I'm saying, make sure that his his relationship with his family, his brother is, is all good. And that's what I love about him. You know, like I said, Don is very loyal. And, um, you know, so just moving on. So London, he comes and tells for like, I need to holler at you for a minute. Let me let me pull you to the side, right? He basically told for that, you know what I'm saying? The same promoters that was in charge of the party last night are the same promoters that is in charge of the concert and they don't even want you to hit the stage. So for upset, he blames everybody. Uh in the heat of the moment, I'm not gonna give for too much. To, you know, too much criticism because in the heat of the moment when you come there to do a performance and the work and then you find out that you can't do it because of the people you associate yourself with, um, I don't, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm not going to give him any criticisms from blaming everybody, but we're going to get into it a little bit later. <laughs> um, so he ends up leaving with his girl and, you know, he was so upset that he threw a bottle of Patron down and it almost hit Don or at least Don got wet and he was just like really for at this point, I was just like, I'm just reading Don's body. And it just seemed like he Don was upset 
or you know, feeling bad for Ford that he wasn't able to perform, but he was annoyed with, with uh, Ford from all that bull crap that Ford was feeding him earlier about not trying to pick sides and all that mess about the, you know, the brawl. But anyways, uh, the scene basically ends with Don going to talk to Rain was like, look, you see what just happened? We all came here for that man, my brother. And now that he, now he can't even, you know what I'm saying, chase his dream because of the, the drama that we brought from Chicago to Jamaica. I think we all need to sit down like adults and have a conversation about it. And Brian agreed. In within seconds, like, bro, I feel that. Yeah, we knew we need to just hash this out. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't need that to happen every time we see each other. And I'm just looking at Don like, listen, Don can be a grown-up when he wants to. But he can also be a toddler that, you know what I'm saying, throws a temper tantrum also. But when he wants to, he can be an adult. And I thought I was very mature in him just like going over to Ryan, even though he has issues with Ryan and all of that. Like, look, let's just sit down and see if we can just like, we, we may not be able to squash it, but we need to be able to move on, respect each other, and all that kind of stuff. Anyways... And now we're going back to Loyal Ink Crib and, um, you know, Don basically saying, like, guys, look, um, let's not end the trip on a bad note. I know we came here for four, but let's still have a good time. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he still want to support four. You know what I'm saying? That's his brother and he loves him. But he was just like, you know what I'm saying? Since, you know, we, you know we're not going to be able to do that, let's still have a good time. So... They go out back, they getting drunk, they partying, they in the pool getting wet. The ladies, they taking their tops off, they shaking their behinds. Van is having the time of his life. He is. He got, I think it was Reese or Lily. I think it was Reese. You know, he had Reese up on his shoulders and she was topless and he was making his move, man. Listen. Cause they were asking him all kind of freaky questions or like how I feel to have these tick old bitties on top of your head or something like that. <laughs> and I was just like, boy, he finna strike. He finna strike while the match is hot. Anyways, so as they having a good time, guess who choose to, guess who VH1 chose to make a special appearance? Yeah, it was Jen. And I'm just sitting there at my, on my sofa. I can't stand when VH1 got to be messy. Listen, they broke up. He living his best life. She living her life. Let's leave it at that. I don't even care about her storyline, her van storyline, excuse me. I really don't because it's not entertaining at all to me. I don't even want to give it too much play, but I, I do have to address some. So she bust up in there. She seen Van living his best life. And you know, she jumped in the pool, tagged him. And I just thought, man, did, did y'all see how fast Van got out of that pool and took off running? He took off running like, man, she about to whoop my ASS. And I'm just like, well, big boy can go. <laughs> Anyways, so they sit down, they having a conversation. Um, and and, and Jen, look, man, look, man, you good. You good. She basically gave Van a sideways apology. She basically said, I'm sorry if, you know, um, I put you in a situation where you got to hear rumors, hear about me doing X, Y, and Z. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting on my sofa, y'all. And only thing I want to know, what well, did you cheat or did you not cheat? That's on look. That's the bottom line. Did you cheat or did you not cheat? I don't want to hear about are you apologizing to me for having my brother come back and tell me something that he he think he saw or something that he saw. No, 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 no. Did you cheat or did you not? She ain't addressed that. And he took her back. He better than me. Cause I'm telling you I mean I ain't. I'm going to be honest with you, man. When your brother come and tell you something, when your sister come and tell you something, it, I don't know, it's just hard to, to rub that off. You know what I'm saying? Like, if my brother, 
I'm, I'm gonna just leave that alone because I can go on and on about that one. I really could. But anyway, he takes it back. Moving on, Danielle has a panic attack. Um, they take her to the hospital. Not gonna spend too much time on that. Uh, then we get Don and Ashley. You know, they're having a day out. Basically, Don trying to rekindle the fire within their relationship, or as he say, friendship. I mean, look here, man. I know the game. That's what dudes say when they're trying to, you know, when they're trying to get back in. Like, we need to focus on being friends again. Now, I ain't saying that we be lying. I'm just saying that's definitely one of the go-to because, you know what I'm saying, a lot of women be like, you know, we got to be friends before we be lovers and X, Y, Z. So, I listen, I know the game. I ain't trying to give away the game. But anyway, so they went out on a little outing. They had a fun swing, drinking, and Ashley brung up the whole side chick that is supposedly pregnant. Don swore up and down that she ain't pregnant. And he also swears up and down if she is pregnant, it ain't mine. Now, I do got to give VH1 and Don some credit. Ever since the side piece came in to the storyline and said that she was messing with Don and she was pregnant, we ain't seen no more of her. And usually, VH1 is messy enough to give her a role on the show. Example, Kirk and Jasmine. But I'm moving on. So that just made me feel like Don is, is somewhat telling the truth about her not being pregnant. Then they show like an Instagram video where she's showing off her nice body in a lingerie set. And she didn't look pregnant at all. And maybe when she showed up at a, you know, a couple seasons ago or last season in a little dress with a little pudge, maybe it was just something she bought to try to put on the show. I don't know. But it, I, I believe Don's telling the truth here. Then we get Danielle being released from the hospital from her, you know what I'm saying, anxiety attack, panic attack. And, then, and let me tell you this. Boy, look, I was telling my girl, I said, look here, I don't think I want to go to Jamaica, baby. This, this woman had a full-blown panic attack in the hospital, sent her home with a little wrinkled-up black bag that they got from the A-Rap store for her to breathe in and breathe out. <laughs> Look here, boy, I, listen, I don't think I want to go to Jamaica because I know just from seeing this that if I was to get sick and got to go to the hospital, I ain't going to make it back to the U.S. I'm just not. They gave her a plastic black bag from the a rap store that they took from a bundle of the counter somewhere because it was all bald and wrinkled up. And I'm just like, and Charmaine told her, oh, told her to blow in it. It's going to help her breathe better. I, I, mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? No shade. I'm with Sean, man. We need we need cuz to be healthy, but that whatever hospital clinic they went to, we need to do a review on them so we know if we go to Jamaica, if we get sick, we got to find somewhere else to go. And finally, we get to the dinner scene. Nine Mag, Lawyer Inc. Lawyer Inc. is already sitting there waiting, right? So before we can even get Nine Mag to walk up, or as they walking up. They give us a confessional scene from Ronnie, and he's selling that. He's selling that, and boy, he talking about some. I don't even know why they want to meet. We ain't got nothing to talk about. And I'm just like, bro, you should have told you should have told Don that when he asked you to meet. Don't be talking all this big talk when you behind closed doors doing a confessional. Let us know what's up before we even get behind closed doors. If you didn't want to meet. You should have told. You should have told Don. I don't think that's a good idea. Let's just leave it alone. Go our separate way. But no, as soon as you get in your confessional, you want to do all this big boy talk. But anyways, just sit down. You know he shows up, and Don took control of the meeting. And uh, basically, Don was like, "Man, we got to figure out a way to, if nothing else, act when we see each other in public." And I agree. Cause that mess that they had going on uh, at the block party was totally unacceptable. I I'm sorry. Wasn't nothing entertaining about it because none of the men folk, like I said, if I would've got Van and Ryan, Don and Ryan, any other man, Van and Ford, Van Jr. or something like that, I would've been entertained. Junior, Lily, Reese, you can miss me with all that. I ain't have to see that at all. But anyways, so 
Don leads to me. So Charmaine speaks up first. And she was like, I just want to know, Ryan, uh, what's the issue between you and I? Is it the cat situation? And instead of Ryan just telling her, and maybe he did. You know, they do a lot of editing. But he addressed the cat situation instead of her dry snitching situation to the blog. He addressed that situation once again in a confessional. I'm starting to believe that he just don't like uh, to cause any friction, any controversy, uh, because I don't know why. Just say what's on your mind, and you would be able to leave and sleep at night without even feeling a certain type of way. Anyway, so he addressed the cat situation. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Listen, I don't think anybody in 9Mag or anybody who watches this show blames Ryan for choosing to, you know what I'm saying, move on with Rachel and his family. Listen, I don't think anybody blames him for that. But it was how he went about things. First off, like I said previously, we all one big group with one big happy family. And you get caught messing with one of, you know what I'm saying, one of us in the circle. And you expect us to just not have an opinion about uh, the way you acted once your girlfriend found out about you messing around with Kat. He was dragging Kat left and right, lying, making it seem like it was all her. He didn't want to have nothing to do with her, but she was pushing up on him. That's what he did. And so everybody in the shop Except for four old fake behind, because he, you know, he did the same thing. But anyways, everybody formed an opinion about it, and I think Ryan just not happy with the opinion that everybody has about the cat situation. I think Ryan feels as though it happened, we got caught, she left, y'all have my back, we keep moving on. But it that's unrealistic. That's unrealistic. How can you expect people who are close to the situation to just dismiss all the negative and bad things that you said and did to one of your own and just agree with you just because she leaves? You see what I'm saying? And I feel like that's how he, he feels. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and as far as, you know, I mean, I'm surprised Van ain't get up and say nothing about the whole cat situation. I really am, especially with how close Van and Cat uh, was, uh, is, or, you know, I was. And then the whole situation with Cat, for me at least, I would just like Ryan to just, just own up to it. You know what I'm saying? It takes two. And she owned up to it. We got a flashback. From when she basically, you know, when everything went down last season, she was crying. She was like, I bow, I, I, I'm leaving. I never step foot in the shop again. X, Y, Z, I'm going to just go do my own thing. And that was the end of Cat. You see what I'm saying? It's like Cat leaving it alone. But you dragging it out because you're not happy with everybody else in the circle opinion about the situation. So you go in and do childish stuff. Which is why I don't understand why he upset Charmaine uh, for for interviewing. Well, I do, but in a sense, it don't make sense because he recorded himself, you know what I'm saying, uh, degrading the tattoo shop, painting the walls, removing the nine mag sign. He, he recorded all of this type of stuff. And he didn't even tell any of these guys his plan. And my thing is, if you're going to be a boss, if you're going to be a boss, I hold you to a higher standard. You can't be my boss and one day you just decide to leave and you up, go and get everything. You mess up our place of business and then uh, you, you you record Instagram clips of you messing up our place of business and you tell me nothing. The lease is about to be up. The building manager doesn't want us here. Ryan, you got to understand where they're coming from. Honestly, I... I I really, I pretty much think at this point they all are over the cat situation. It was just how he left Nine Mag at this point. How he just up and left like he didn't owe them a explanation. And some people may feel like he don't. Because he a grown man with a family and he doing it for his family. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? You would think you've been working with a group of people for so many years 
that you would at least give them a heads up about what's going on or at least uh, express your dislike, you know, your disliking about the whole cat situation and how everybody thinking about him. But anyways, moving on. Um, four, 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 <laughs> four started talking and boy, I can't, he just works my nerve, man. He really works my nerve because he basically is sitting there blaming everybody. And Don just like, uh uh, uh uh, uh uh, uh uh, uh uh, Don like, uh uh, uh uh, uh uh, 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 which one of us is going to be? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Do you, you know what I'm saying? Which one of us make it easier for, you know what I'm saying, you to be cool with? Because four was like, you know what I'm saying? For my birthday, I want to hang out with y'all. I want to hang out with him. And the reason that we all in this, this situation is because the beach that everybody has with him. Well, though, uh, four, you had the same exact beef that everybody else had with Ryan. But all of a sudden, y'all best friends now. All of a sudden, y'all best friends now. I, I don't get it. You was just as hurt, just as mad, upset, any other words you can think of when Ryan left, put those videos up on Instagram, shot the shop, shot the shop up. You was mad just like everybody else. The only thing you wasn't mad about was cat, because you did cat the exact same way, you dirty dog. So Don told Ford to shut up. You gonna listen to me. We in this because he, as in Ryan, Split this thing up. So now it's different sides to it. And four, like, why I gotta pick a side? Look here, man. Look here. Four, I'm gonna just say this right here. You be pissing me all the way off. Every week. Then four had the nerve to tell my son, I gotta distance myself from this. I done made up my mind that once we leave Jamaica, I ain't even going back to Chicago. I'm going to LA. And I'm just like, we in this situation because of you. Because of you. You extended the invite to Ryan, NIMAG, and the people that you work with, they showed up to support you. And so that's how everything went down. Because you wasn't straight up. If you would have told them, Ryan coming, I guarantee you none of them would have came. You ain't got nobody to blame about you. Listen, I get it. Lily, uh, uh, Junior, I get it. But the root of the problem started because of who you chose to extend the invite to as opposed to who you chose not to extend the invite to. That's the root of the problem, bro. Let's take some ownership. Let's be a man about it. Let's check it. So Don checking it. Don like, uh-uh, shut up, boy. You're going to listen to me. I love you, but you're going to listen to me. Ryan created the friction when he left and how he left. But Ford don't want to hear it. He don't want to hear it. And you know what? Like I said, man, I, I know y'all can tell from my tone, this was a dry episode to me because we got nothing accomplished. Ryan ended up saying, F y'all, F it. And Van was like, that's all I need to hear. That was validation for me to keep moving on, living my best life, and doing what I do. And, and, and it just made Don even, you know, even more upset. But look, like I said, man, it wasn't a great episode. Um... Ford made me mad as usual. Ryan made me mad as usual. I don't, I just need them. I mean, my thing is with Ryan, I'm going to say this before I go. You can't have it just your way. You can't just want people to see where you're coming from and you not see where they're coming from. You just can't. And at the end of the day, he just wanted to be all about him and what he want. And you know what I'm saying? Want everybody to you know what I'm saying, agree and react, uh, you know, to things how he wants them to because he feels as though since he was the boss, he controls the narrative of the way the friendship should go. He don't even want to hear how they feel. And he had never talking about something. I don't even know why I came to this. They ain't, you know, they ain't want to hear nothing I had to say anyway. You ain't say nothing. You ain't say nothing. If you would have just put it all out there and said from the jump, I chose my family. I, look, I admit, as a man, I went about the wrong way, messing up the shop, X, Y, Z, but I chose my family in the store. I felt like every single body at that table would have been like, you know what, we'll charge it to the game. Ryan, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. I feel like all the viewers would feel like that. But look, let me know if I'm wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong about four not standing up 
uh, taking some ownership for the reason that things went down by Ryan. Listen, it was a dry episode. I'm just trying to squeeze some content out of it. Anyways, guys, see you guys next time. Make sure you guys subscribe, hit the like button. Also, comment, add comments. If I miss anything, if you guys want to add anything, just let me know. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.